North Korea supplies old multiple launch rocket systems to Russia. The intelligence agency of South Korea announced its suspicions that North Korean weapons manufactured in the 1970s were supplied to Russia for the war against Ukraine. Yonhap reports this. The National Intelligence Service made the statement in response to a recent report by local media that 122mm artillery shells manufactured in North Korea in the 1970s were among the weapons used by Russia in the war against Ukraine. The intelligence agency of South Korea is analyzing the relevant situation in detail and also continues to monitor the general military cooperation between North Korea and Russia. South Korea's intelligence service analyzed photos published by a Ukrainian photographer last year and discovered Korean letters including the number 122 that were inscribed on the missile shells. Experts said these are most likely 120mm projectiles for rocket launcher systems. South Korea's defense minister Shin Won-sik estimated that North Korea sent about 6,700 containers to Russia after the two countries' summit in September, enough to house about 3,152mm artillery shells or 500,122mm artillery shells. The US has counted the number of ammunition that North Korea has provided to Russia. North Korea and Russia violate all international agreements. The deputy head of the US mission to the OSCE, Tracy Newell, stated this at the meeting of the OSCE Permanent Council on Thursday in Vienna. Since the end of last year, North Korea has delivered almost 11,000 containers of ammunition to Russia, as well as ballistic missile launchers and several dozen ballistic missiles. Russia has repeatedly used these weapons to attack Ukrainian infrastructure. The American diplomat said Pyongyang is not doing this for free. North Korea is interested in fighter jets, surface-to-air missiles, armored vehicles, ballistic missile equipment or materials, and other advanced technologies. It is clear that Russia and North Korea are violating UN Security Council resolutions by participating in these deliveries. The diplomat added that Russia and Iran are also developing their ties in other areas, primarily in oil and gas and banking, and such cooperation weakens our collective efforts aimed at ending Russia's war against Ukraine. Over the course of a day, Russia's total losses in Ukraine became an absolute record, Ukrainian soldiers managed to defeat 1,740 opponents. As of May 13, the enemy had lost 484,030 invaders, the ground forces of the Ukrainian armed forces reported on Telegram. In addition, 31 occupier tanks, 42 armored combat vehicles, 15 artillery systems, 4 multiple launch rocket systems, 26 operational tactical drones, 3 cruise missiles, 59 units of automotive equipment and tank trucks and 6 units of special equipment were destroyed. Advisor to the mayor of the still-occupied Mariupol, Pyotr Andriyashenko, wrote in his messenger, 1,740 good Russians per day. An absolute record. But Ukraine's military chief Oleksandr Sersky said his forces were facing a difficult situation in the northeastern Kharkiv region, where thousands more people have fled their homes amid an advance by Russian forces. Ukraine's general staff said fighting was raging around Vovchansk, a town about 4 kilometers from the border and 45 kilometers from Kharkiv, Ukraine's second biggest city and the capital of the Kharkiv region. The Ukrainian military said Russia had deployed significant forces for its attack on the town, but taking no account of their own losses, with at least 100 soldiers reported dead. In recent days, Vovchansk has become a key target of Russia's new offensive, as Russia launched an attempt on May 10 to break through in Kharkiv Oblast. The general staff said it is mounting a defensive operation to halt Russian advances that have breached Ukraine's defenses. Additional reserves are being deployed to the area in order to stabilize the situation. Our defenders are conducting defensive operations, inflicting fire damage on the enemy, widely using unmanned systems for reconnaissance and pinpoint strikes to inflict maximum losses. Vovchansk was previously liberated from Russian occupation during Ukraine's lightning counteroffensive in September 2022.